Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a paper mache mask using wet and stick art tape. This is a tape that's made by Paycon and it's water activated tape. This is similar to the paper mache technique where we're covering our armature or our balloon with strips of paper. A huge difference is that the wet and stick art tape is much easier to use. It dries faster and it already comes in a variety of colors. You may not even need to paint it later on because you have a nice vibrant color that already comes from these wet and stick art tapes. The supplies that you need, you need this Paycon wet and stick art tape and you can find it at a variety of stores. You can also find it online and you need some balloons. I just use some 12 inch balloons, any color you want. Make sure you have some extras because they will pop. You need one balloon per mask unless you want to use more balloons to make like a nose or ears. Then you need a container with water in it. These three supplies are all you need to make the basic shape. Unless you want to add things like ears or noses. Before we started, I had my students sketch the shape of the balloon and then they added on parts to make it into their animal or their wild thing. I had cardboard cups they could use and we just attached them with tape. And supply is masking tape and I'm going to use this masking tape that's made by Paycon. It's nice and bright and colored and it works really well for this project. They come in a variety of colors and you could also use these to decorate your mask after. Once you attach all of your appendages or all of your parts for your ears, your nose, anything that's coming off. Then you cover the whole thing using the wet and stick art tape. After you've covered it and it's all dry, it can take anywhere from four hours to overnight. Then you're ready to decorate it. What can you use to decorate it? You could use more strips of the wet and stick art tape. You could use paints. You can use acrylic, tempera paints, poster paints. And if you're going to use paints, then you probably just need to buy some paint brushes. As you can see in this, we just decorated it using construction paper and we just cut strips of it and then we glued it in layers. Paycon makes a variety of construction papers. The kinds that we use for this mask are the True Ray construction paper, and this comes in a bunch of different colors. And then we also use the Paycon Sunworks construction paper. We used these Coro Buff sheets of paper, and we use those inside of some of our ears. We also use some of the plastic poster board that's made by Paycon for some of the teeth. But if all you have is cardboard, that's fine. You can also use newspaper. We crunched up a ball of newspaper, and first we put some masking tape over it, and then the art tape and then we painted it after. So that's just a bunch of newspaper under there. One of my students used feathers to add to the outside to make it look more like a bird. If you're going to use construction paper, you're going to need scissors. We use a pencil to draw our designs on our paper and then also to draw on the mask. You can look at this and kind of tell. We used cups and we just taped them to it upside down. You can see there's a cup taped inside of it. Be creative and let your students be creative. The key with the wet and stick art tape is that you keep it dry until you're ready to use it. If this roll got wet, it would all get taped together. My students and I were really careful to keep them away from the water. We used a paper towel or a cloth to keep the area we were working at dry. As you start moving the strips onto your mask, everything's gonna get really wet. Also, you need a container for water. A bowl would work. If you're working with smaller children, the bigger this container, the better. One other supply that I forgot to mention, and this is one that should only be used by the teacher or by older students, is an X-Acto knife. Something that will allow us to poke the holes through for the eyes. So make sure if you're using this in a classroom with small children, you keep this up and you keep track of it because they can be really dangerous. So this is the drawing that I'm starting with and let me just show you the different steps to make this mask. So the first thing you wanna do is blow up the balloon. Make sure your balloon is bigger than whoever's head is going to have it on. Younger students might need a little help blowing up and tying the balloon. And then we're going to add our parts to the balloon. So I want two round ears. So draw one of your ears and then cut it out. The younger kids may need help cutting out their ears. Then take that same ear and trace it. Cut it out. There we have our two ears. Now remember that we are attaching these to a round balloon. So we need to round the inside of the ears. Not very much, just a little bit. So once you're ready, and you might need two or three pieces of tape on each side. Go ahead and figure out where you want it to be. This is what you would do if you wanted to add spikes or ears. Once you get your appendages taped down, you're ready to start using your wet and stick art tape. For things like the ears, you want to use smaller pieces. It's just a little bit easier. For the larger areas, use bigger strips like this. I told my students, start with 30 to 40 strips and then get more as you need it. For younger students, you may need to do this for them. For older students, I just had them do it themselves. 
Once you have finished tearing your art tape, you are ready to start. And this is a good way to set up your workstation. The wet and stick art tape, your water, and then your balloon. And if you're left-handed, the wet and stick art tape, water, and your balloon. And make sure that this is put away so it won't get wet. Cover all of the balloon and all of the cardboard. And you can do two to three layers. Before my students started, we did a test. I wanted to make sure they could tell which side was sticky and which side wasn't. Because they need to put the sticky side down on the balloon. Once you get it wet, the sticky side will be slimy. You can feel the glue that's on it. I just made sure they each touched it and could feel the slimy side and then they were ready to start. And instead of just throwing your paper in the water, I like to just push it down with one finger and pull it with one finger to get it all wet. If you have these big pieces, you just dunk it, pull the finger over it, and then pull it through. And then make sure you put the sticky side onto your balloon and cover the whole thing with two to three layers. You can overlap them on the ears and different parts that you've added, the spikes can be a little bit harder. You just wanna wrap it all around. So that's one way to cover the ears. For my students, I just came around with my cloth and just dried the table off under it. And you can use your hands to smooth it down a little bit if you get some bumps in there. So if these strips fall onto the floor, they get stuck to your table, all you need to do is put a little water on them and they'll wipe away really easily. When you start to get near the end, just look for any of the spots that are the color of your balloon and then make sure you cover them. Once you're finished covering the majority of it, you want to hang it up. So make sure all of the balloon is covered. You can hang it from a string here, hang it from anything. You could set it on a shelf to dry, just make sure the water doesn't pool up under it and stop it from drying. And make sure the ears are in the direction you want them to be while it's drying. I am just using a little bit of string to hang mine up. Here is one that I made yesterday and it is totally dry and my balloon didn't pop so what I'm gonna do is pop it. If it sucks part of your mask in, just pop it back out and just get it out of your mask. Then we wanna make this hole big enough for a neck. Once the mask is dry, to get it on, cut a line from the bottom up to almost to the middle of the top. Decide where the front is, I want the other side to be the front. So you're gonna cut all the way up to the middle and this makes it so they can get it on and they put their chin in first. And then I usually will round off these corners so there's not a pokey part coming into their neck. Then you're going to have them try it on and have them try to poke your eyes. Where would your eyes be? Use a pencil to make two little X's where their eyes might be and just cut small holes with your X-Acto knife for them. Do not let the kids touch these. And then have them try it on and see if you need to lift it up or down. Once you've figured out where the eyes need to be, you can make them bigger, smaller, and the students can draw them on. They could paint this in white or you could just cut the whole thing out and that's what I'm gonna do. Well, the teacher is gonna have to help with this or you know, if they're older students, they might be able to do it on their own. Once you have the hole in there, they also might be able to use scissors. After you've cut out the eyes, you can add some paint to this. So I'm just gonna be using black and orange. You wanna have your table covered and we just used a plastic tablecloth. I'm using a piece of construction paper as my palette and then I'm gonna look at my drawing and try to remember the different things that I wanted on this. This surface, you can not only paint on it, you can draw on it. Some students might want to draw the patterns on before they paint. If you're doing this lesson with a large class, I would put single colors in these containers or in a cup so that your students can just take right from it. But if it's a small class, you could just use a piece of construction paper as your palette and take right from that. Also, you can use markers for this part. And then you wanna let this dry. And what I did, I just put like bottles of cleaner under them and let them dry straight up. Here are some examples of the masks that we made in class. And here are some pictures of my students. Some of them were only three years old and they made these. Have a wonderful day. We will see you around on YouTube.